Hi, I'm Tim Gideon for PC Mag, and today we take a close look at Apple's new iPods, the 4th generation Touch, 6th generation Nano, and 4th generation Shuffle. The clear star of this trio is the iPod Touch, running iOS 4.1. It has a 3.5 inch retina display like the iPhone 4s, a sleep power button up top, headphone jack and 30 pin connector for sync on the bottom panel, volume controls on the left, and of course, the front and back facing cameras. There's a mic next to the lens on the back as well. It would be easy to ramble on and on about iOS 4.1. It's a great operating system, but today let's focus on the iPod Touch's great new features. The cameras first. Operation of the camera is so easy easy. It's not even worth looking at instructions. You tap this button in order to take a picture. It goes to your gallery. If you want to switch the lens, you press this button up top and all of a sudden you're looking at what's in front of you. You can adjust exposure by tapping anywhere on the screen right before you take the picture. You can zoom in by sliding your finger left to right on the bottom of the screen. Unfortunately, there's no flash. So in dim lighting, your pictures will have some noise artifacts, but in decent lighting or really bright lighting, the pictures look great. To make videos, you slide this switch here. You press this red button. You're recording video. If you want to edit your videos, a timeline with thumbnails will appear at the top when you're finished recording and you can trim the top and bottom on the player itself. As we wrote our reviews, we did not have access to the iMovie app for iPod Touch. It's only out for iPhone 4 right now, but Apple says it's coming out in the next week. We were able to test FaceTime. I actually had a lengthy conversation with someone in California while I was in New York, and it worked perfectly. No glitches, no stuttering, the video quality was nice. I was not able to video record that chat, but you've seen the commercials, and it looks actually very similar to what you see on television. When you're feeling solitary, the Netflix app is great for watching things on your instant queue, and even though this isn't an iPad, iBooks still look great on the iPod screen, but Apple's definitely making a push to get you to be more social. Now, they don't want you to go out and talk and meet people in person, silly, but they do want you to do things like use Game Center, which is uh, not really populated with too many games yet, but will be, my guess is, in the next week or two. We saw a demo at the event. You can play sword fighting games against a friend of yours or a complete stranger. You get a ranking, and if you're really bad, then you'll only play really bad people if that's what you want. Of course, if you really hate people or if you're not near a Wi-Fi connection, you can still play a game you've already downloaded all by yourself. 99 cent TV rentals aren't just for the Apple TV. You can download them right on your iPod Touch. And now there's Ping, the social aspect of iTunes that Apple is hoping will blow up like Facebook. And by the way, it's still a great music player. However, some of Apple's decisions have me shaking my head in disbelief. Enter the sixth generation Nano. I don't know what they were thinking. It's beautiful. As you can see, the screen dominates the entire player and there's no accelerometer, but you can twist the screen to face whatever direction you want it to face. There are volume controls and a power button up top, an earphone jack, 30 pin connector on the bottom panel and the back is a clip with the Apple logo. As you can see, there are four different main menus you can scroll through. You can change the order of these apps, but you can't add or change apps. They're not really apps. They're more like shortcuts to different parts of the player. Apple kept Nike's fitness program on the device, so if you're an avid pedometer user, you're still in luck. If you're an avid video recorder, or even just like watching TV episodes you downloaded from iTunes on your iPod, you are out of luck. The Nano no longer plays video, no longer records video. Apple kept the FM tuner, which uses your earphones as the antenna and has a seemingly endless list of programmable presets for the radio dial. I actually tried to save every spot on the dial I could till I got bored. The new Nano looks like an iPod Shuffle and it should have been the new iPod Shuffle, but at the same price as last year's iPod Nano, which had video playback, a larger screen, and a video camera, it's just not a very good deal. We miss you, fifth generation Nano. Come back. I have no problem whatsoever with the iPod Shuffle, which at 49 bucks for two gigs is not exactly a steal. There are cheaper budget players out there, but none of them will sync with iTunes. So if you live in the iTunes ecosystem, this is the cheapest way to do it. There's no screen, there's a click wheel. Up top, you have a switch to either shuffle or listen to things in order. There's no 30 pin connector. All the audio comes out of the earphone jack. So this won't fit in most iPod speaker docks, but there is a cable to connect it to your computer that comes with the shuffle. The Apple fourth gen iPod Touch comes in eight gigs for 229, 32 gigs for 299, and 399 for the 64 gigabyte model. The sixth generation Nano comes in 8 and 16 gigabytes for 149 and $179, and the fourth gen shuffle is 49 bucks for 2 gigs. I'm Tim Gideon for PCMag.com. Go to our website for even more stuff we didn't have time to talk about here.